love and light i quickly want to touch upon this this is courtesy of the joe budden podcast um i guess they were doing a wrap-up episode maybe or maybe a the new episode tool into the new year but essentially joe was kind of reflecting on how they've been able to kind of weather the storm of all the fallout with the podcast with rory amal he'd been getting accused of the sexual assault the dropping of the cash app and stuff like loads of drama around joe budden as per usual right with joe budden it's never a there's never a boring day with when it comes to joe budden and everything concerning him and i don't know man for me as a fan somebody who kind of decided to stop listening to the show based upon how he treated Rory and Moore and based upon my idea of their relationship and how what he kind of stood for as a creative and as a man who got completely shattered and again maybe it's my own naivete I know parasocial relationships I know reading too much into it I know I don't know these people I know I know I know but still being a fan of the show and kind of feeling like you're like a fly on the wall, like you're there in the background, like you're there in the corner listening into a group of friends that, that you wish were your friends. And then suddenly realizing that that whole friendship was, you know, built on nothing in, in, in flipping Joe's eyes and that he could at will when he wanted to decide to just fire the entire team because he felt as if like the show was basically him and he was the most important person on the show, which he might have been proved right because the show's still running now. I'm not too sure how you kind of read that. But in general, it was quite hard for me to take because again, like I said, I generally think at, at its peak, the Joe Bunner podcast was legitimately one of the best podcasts that exist. Maybe uh, maybe top one for me, even above him, even Joe Rogan. In terms of what they spoke about, in terms of black culture, in terms of what they spoke about, in terms of hip hop, in terms of what they spoke about, in terms of just news and sports takes and the banter between them, it was legitimately had a run where it was 100% the number one podcast I'd go listen to every single time. Didn't matter when it dropped, didn't matter how long the episodes were, didn't matter what I was doing, I'd always listen to it. It always came about at the right time. It always provided good entertainment. It took away huge chunks of the day, especially saturday afternoon when you're just waking up you wanted to clean the house you went to get ready you're going to the gym whatever it may be also a great soundtrack to have so to for me to be in a position where i'm like you know i'm not gonna listen to it anymore it took a lot but again like i said my whole kind of love for the show was wrapped around their friendship and the moment that friendship was broken or the moment it looked like it was you know it reached a point where it was never going to be um recovered in any way shape or form or repaired i had to i had to dip out and again you know as much as i love um ice and ish who's done a really great job let's not deny them about that right they've come in under really strenuous circumstances and fitted in really well they've essentially helped out joe in that regard because they've held the podcast together because i think without them the show dies no one wants to listen to you know parks get on his knees and blow fucking joe for like you know an hour and a half that he already does at a, at a time so to have somebody break up that kind of um, conversation and offer kind of counterpoints and have two of those guys maybe push back on Joe a little bit or push back on Parks it makes for a decent show I haven't listened to it in full again since the, those guys left or well, I listened to all the clips but from the clips I've seen I still issue doing a good job but that being said there's no denying there's no denying that the fans that have jumped off the Joe Biden podcast jumped off for good reason because most of them had this idea of Joe being one way he exposed himself to be another way and then we decided to make a decision to jump off based on what we saw because we listen to these guys every single day or maybe no, whenever they drop, let's say three times a week or two times a week, hours and hours of content over the years, you know, getting information or reviews or insights on them based on the other people that are close to them, them talking about themselves in the third person, the first person, whatever, right? You can easily kind of um, start to make an idea of what that person's about or who they are as a human being but I'm sure people can do that to me too you can kind of figure out what I'm about what I stand for how I'll react to certain situations and stuff so then when stuff comes out about me you can either when a new story comes out about me god forbid nothing bad you can either go oh yeah that sounds like something he would do or you can be like oh shit that sounds really surprising right but you can do that because you've listened to me speak for many, many hours in a day, many, many hours in a week, month, year, whatever it may be called. So you have your right to do that. Now, maybe what I did, I didn't intend it to, to come out that way. Cool. But you're in your right and you have the position or yeah, you're in your right and you have the faculties to be able to deduce or to figure out what I'm about as a person based on what I say. But for whatever reason, when it comes to certain podcasts or certain YouTubers, certain influencers, they have this weird notion in their head that fans aren't allowed to kind of overanalyze what they say or how they act or to theorize about what's going on behind the scenes. But yet they do exactly the same thing in other people's lives every single day when they talk, which is why I do too, right? You kind of fill in the gaps of people that you don't know, who you don't spoke to, who you haven't spoken to. But I don't kind of pretend that I know who they are. 
But then I also won't get offended if somebody turned around and said something else about me because it's just the game that we play, right? Everyone's throwing out dumb opinions. We're all dumb apes out here just trying to make a buck and trying to, you know, feed our families and stay alive and have some fun. That's it, right? That's all we're trying to do. But for whatever reason, these guys seem to think that the fans got it all wrong. They don't know what's going on. Nothing at all. All our guesses were completely incorrect, which they weren't because some people, especially on the Joe Budden subreddit, some people were calling out the split and the tension from way back when I wasn't even a believer. I was like, nah, these guys are bugging, they're tripping, Reddit's toxic. Even I was saying that back then. And it all it all got to be revealed to be correct. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and let's not even talk about the Rory and Moore stuff. Like, what Joe did with Olivia Dope, people were saying at the time of recording when it came out that that was, that was kind of out of hand and that was a little bit disgusting. People were saying it then. And now they want to make it out as if like we're all bugging out. But anyway, Joe Biden just does what Joe Biden does say. So, you know, here's, here's him on the podcast talking about it, essentially kind of reviewing the, sh reviewing the year and basically saying the fans don't know what they're talking about or they've got it all wrong, which is, you know, again, it's typical, isn't it? But let's continue. People get uncomfortable with change. Yeah. You don't necessarily like change, especially when something is going yeah. and something is working, but you got to adapt. And boy, this year has just shown a lot out of people now what the fuck is he even wearing like what is he wearing what's that hat what's that scarf like joe biden is the most consistently is the most consistently badly dressed person i've ever seen in the media i thought dean zimero dressed pretty terribly right but again dean zimero that's a pretty typical new yorker way of dressing right where you match your trainers with your necklace with your t-shirt and your jacket and shit it's a little bit loopy but you know if you've been to new york you'd know that guys from the hood or guys from ends generally dress like that especially when they get a bit of money that's just what they do right they just like to look fly quote unquote i don't necessarily like it. it's not necessarily a great Euro european aesthetic don't get me wrong but just you know you can be objective and be like okay cool i don't get it. it's not for me but they're not badly dressed right it's just not for me whereas this is like what is this a dad hat that says versace with a scarf that matches the logo color but not quite and a long sleeve shirt like i don't i don't know i don't know the set design don't even get me started are they fucking um what is it is this a gender reveal is this an engagement is this a funeral we don't know we don't know people's ability to adapt mm -hmm. yeah not just mine yeah it's it's across the board for sure here but comes Parks. Your ability to adapt was also impressive. Because you adapt. They're going to call me a dick rider. No, no, no. It's fine. It's cool. So. You know they're going to No, I just think yeah, you're... Yeah. So. That's, That's what they do. Yeah, I don't really care. That's true. I hate when they do that. <laughs> so what? I don't care. But I, I think your adaptation they paint, But they with. just paint people's character the they wrong don't way. Know, right. but they, they don't know anybody. I know. I know. And they so, also think that this is a TV show. This is a, a fallacy. This is... <sighs> we're characters playing so the true parts. So that's true. And to some degree, we kind of are. I hate them so much. Wait, some, to to a degree, they they really believe. I hate like John Park so much. Playing roles. Correct. Yes. The perception of Never people is this that. is not real human beings. This is people we see on the TV or the that's phone. Or Who said that? Who ever said that they don't think they're real human beings? Especially on the Joe Budden subreddit. We've all called out Parks because he was the fan favorite for a long time because he seemed to be the only voice of reason in that room on some occasions. Someone that would poke fun at everybody, especially Joe Budden, right? Little jabs here and there. But then over time, when it became evident that Joe was having problems with Rory and Mal, again, no one's bemoaning him. No one's kind of criticizing him from the decision to kind of latch onto Joe. But let's not deny he went from being the person that was quite impartial in some way, shape or form to suddenly being Joe Budden's cock holster because he decided that Joe Budden's where the money's at which was a wise decision in the end because he wasn't never close to Rory Moore like he was to Joe because he's been Joe's engineer so it makes sense and suppose we have heard the relationship between hip-hop artists and their engineers is always a little bit weird anyway they have this weird kind of you know um, uh, they have this weird bond that can't people can't really get people can't really understand which makes sense we spend hours and hours in the studio chasing your dream trying to chase a hit i understand there's a bond that can be there that people don't really get but let's not deny he went from being everyone's fan favorite to suddenly being joe's personal flipping cheerleader and everyone called it out that was it that's where it ended and he got emotional he got annoyed i think he sent back tweets or messages to somebody in the dms talking about how the real what do you call it um what was it called call him what, what did someone say to him in the dms Something about oppression. I don't know. Something nuts. So he replied crazy in the DM to people. He just seemed like a bit. And again, he was in this on his holiday talking about how he was no on his honeymoon or something talking about how he wasn't bothered. But then he was tweeting 
on the beach somewhere. Like, I don't know. He just he just went a bit loopy. And I get it because Parks is not a media guy. He's not a media personality. To suddenly be attacked by people, it maybe felt a little bit away. But let's not de- let's not deny it. You act in one way, people called it out. And that's the, that's the long and short of it. Um, Ice come Ice talking is a bit wild because his whole personality on social media is about throwing out opinions and kind of playing a character and you know purporting to be one way. So to him to come out come out and say they don't know you, they don't know you, it's like, mate, I don't know, you've been on social media for like more than a decade. People can kind of are allowed to maybe frame or work out or kind of put together an opinion of who they think you are based on what you've been putting out there for a long time. It may not be right, it may not be true, but you've not made any effort to change, really. You know what I mean? So I don't know what you want from people, man. I really don't. But these guys are absolutely batshit. Whatever. I never uh-huh. looked at it that no, way. That's fair. Yeah. That explains a lot, that, actually. Yeah. Knowing that. Like, some yeah. of the shit I see explains a lot now. Uh-huh. They don't think you of you as a real person. They think of you as someone that's playing ice. Oh, I hate this guy, man. You are ice the character. You are not. Got it. Was chance shit. Okay. The shit that they say on the internet, they wouldn't say to you in person because they would not think of you as ice in person. That's a horrible fucking argument. Who says anything to anybody in person rude anyway, in general? Someone cuts in a line at you at an airport. You don't even call that out, some people. Why would you go and cross the road and see a podcast and say, I hate what you said in episode 275? No one says that because who's got time? In real life, you can do it on the phone, on the fly, whilst you're multitasking, whilst you're in a shop, whatever, because it's just this the person isn't there. It's the whole point of you doing it. This whole idea about, oh, they don't say it to you, so of course they wouldn't. Why would they? What sense does that fucking make? Like, honestly, it's so dumb. Of course, it's easy to say it on the phone. It's also easy to say Meek Mill's album's trash on the phone. If you're standing in front of you and you ask you, what's your album? Like, are you going to tell him it's trash? Probably not. Like, it's not that difficult to, like, to figure out. This, I honestly, I don't know. I think it's a, I wonder what it is. I hope I don't get there. I hope I'm, I stay the same as I am. But whatever happens with content creators, influencers, podcast, whatever, there's something about it. They somehow, it's like when they start, all the feedback from the fans is important, right? What you say, comments, messages, it's good. It feeds the ego. It gives you direction of where to go, blah, 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 right? But then somehow, shape or form, they get to another level. And then suddenly, whatever the fans have to say is nonsense they're trolls they're detractors they're trying to you know um they're trying to cause drama they don't get it um there's a bigger player there's a bigger thing at play the gig is the gig like come on brother so your fans build you up to get there but then once you're there suddenly you don't need them and they just you know you just um your fans don't know what they want they don't know what changes like what do you mean they don't want changes it was going all right the podcast was fine the guys asked for a ca- again. Let, let's not rewrite history. So, from what we know so far, the guys asked for accounting. Joe Budden didn't want to give it to them, and I, I, I'm assuming at the same time he was also maybe having reservations about how their deal was worked out, how they negotiated the deal because he maybe didn't like the profit split thing they had to do. But regardless, they signed it. Now it's too late. But he wasn't. He didn't like it. So he's in his right to say, "I don't want to give it to you." Now, anything that happened after the fact is what happened after the fact. But the general point of it is that. Those guys wanted something, some details. He didn't want to give it to them. That caused tension. You know, it, it went where it went. But it could have been rectified. If you're a grown up, you could have got around a table and worked out something that would have kept the show together. Most people can do that. Most people, especially if you're friends. But that's what, that's what, and again, naivete from them, from their side, R&M, when it comes to Rory and Mole, because I think they generally thought that Joe wouldn't do what he's done to others to them. But Joe clearly showed that he doesn't have any friends when it comes to media or a business. He's just a business guy. He doesn't have friendships from what he's basically shown us, right? Because they were saying to him in a kind of roundabout way, don't dog us out like this or maybe show us the business, show us the books, explain to us what's going on, give us more um, information because we're friends. Just on a friends thing. Not because we're, we, we deserve it on paper, but because we're friends. But he said no in a roundabout way. Cool, no problem. But the fans are allowed to feel a way about that. Like they're allowed. They're allowed. It's not because they don't want change because that's something that's avoidable. And again, for some somebody on a show, even Rory and Mole included, they kept speaking about everyone's business and saying how everyone's deals are so bad and how they don't know what contracts they worked themselves into. You got yourselves involved in a contract that made it so you couldn't look at the books or you couldn't get accurate accounting and you got kicked off your own show. That's how bad your, your deal was. So clearly there was an issue there. We're allowed to comment on it. I don't understand this. Like you're, you, you can suck them off if you want, if you're Parks, Right. And in that style, but the moment you have something to push back on, suddenly they get annoyed. It's just like, oh. But well, see, this that explains you, the why. That's up. why. Because I've come across people that 
I, I seen what you said online. Uh huh. And when you see me, it's yo, ice, what up? Let's have a yeah, drink. Yeah. Let's like, you know, you cool as shit. Yeah. I'm like, <sighs> all right, all right, yeah, bad boy, bad boy. What are you gonna do? It's true. And this is just a it's a hard, it's a hard pill to swallow too. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. It's a, it's a hard because I'm still not used to that. I still get offended sometimes, and I gotta just put my phone down or whatever. And, uh, it's not really enough. You should get offended because you're Joe Budden cock holster, bro. You made excuses for the guy when he was being clearly shitty to friends that we. Unex- again, maybe it's our fault. We thought Parks was friends with Rory O'Mal too. He clearly wasn't. He was more Joe Budden's friends and Joe Budden's friends happens to be Rory O'Mal and then they just hung out together because R- Parks was way around Joe because Joe, Joe's always recording. Parks is the engineer. Cool, audio engineer. We get it. But we clearly thought they were all friends when they wish they weren't, all right? Because that's why the deal or the business broke down as bad as it did. Who knows? Some people could argue they were friends. That's why the deal got as bad or that's why the situation got as bad as it does because only friends could be that offended by this. I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to say. But the fact of the matter is he clearly picked a side early on when it felt as if at the time you could say it was perceived as what, what the information we had at that point was that Joe was being a prick to Rory and Maul and parks aligned himself with the prick so clearly if you're lining yourself with the prick we can call you a prick you can not like it you can be offended and annoyed but it doesn't mean what we're saying isn't right because with the information we have only available is what we see and what we read online that's all we have we don't we're not around you guys 24 7 of course we're not we're not your fucking fiance or your wife we, we, we quit we can't do that but if we if you align yourself with the dickhead who's mugging off his friends and we think he's mugging off his friends and he's acting like he's mugging off his friends and his friends act like he's mugging off his friends and their friends are friends are thinking he's mugging off their friends, of course we're gonna say that. Of course. God damn it. Vince thing on my end, I just be like, fuck you. Like No doubt, of course. But I, I but I expect that to trans, translate to real life. Uh-huh. Like don't uh-huh. come up to me and be cool Never as shit will. now. Never will, bro. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Before you guys got here, I had to be pod blow up. And a lot of them out there said, yo, he's an asshole. That's not how you treat your friends. Of course. That's true. Which you know is what true. What? How y'all know? That part. <laughs> how do y'all know that? Unless you think that everybody is a character and has a role to play mm-hmm. and shoes to fill. This guy is insane. Man. You would have to insane. think that you're privy to all of the information and that you're looking at decisions made from everything that you have witnessed. Oh, well, you will be taking some things for granted. We're anyway. Seinfeld to them. Yes. That's nice. We're Seinfeld to them. These, to these, it makes it- these niggas really think they're Seinfeld. Like, honest, I don't, I don't, like, even if we're not privy to the information that we have available, does this guy generally think that he did nothing wrong in that situation? Does he honestly think nothing... That he can't even perceive why somebody would look at that situation, not knowing who any of these guys are, and just say maybe what that guy did was fucked up. The video of him ranting with the empty chairs, screaming at everybody, they're fired. Him basically, the the story being replayed that he said to Mal that the podcast is none of your business, and him saying, yeah, I know what I said, (laughs) and not not even apologizing, right? Saying something rude as that. Having it replayed back to you while you're trying to reconcile with your friends sitting next to you, and then instead of saying, yeah, I know, I fucked up, he says, yeah, I know what I said. Like, what? It makes so much sense once you said that, though. Like, shit just clicked, like... It explains so much shit. Because I be sometimes like, dog, what the fuck? You, you don't even know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. They don't. It's fine. But nah, what make you think they you're even correct That'd enough to say that? You you don't know these people. Mm. You don't know anyone you're talking about either. You don't know who fucking all these guys are anyway, personally. And you hypothesize about their lives the whole time. Honestly, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm not playing the whole clip. Fuck it, man. These guys are getting on my nerves. They're getting me hot. I love the show when it was good, man. It was really good. It was one of the best podcasts that ever existed in the history of the world. I don't care what anyone says. Then it fell off a cliff because it did, because, you know, things happen. Then they couldn't, you know, reconcile their differences. And then when we tried to psychoanalyze stuff and tried to pull stuff and pull in clips, out, they clearly had issues from behind the scenes that we weren't aware about, which some people on the subreddit called that time ago. And it kind of related to what it's kind of relate to what's going on now. They tell you now that you're smoking budge. Or that you think they're characters or that we think we're, they're Seinfeld. Like, jog on, bruv. Jog, I'm glad I don't listen to podcasts anymore. Again, I'm happy that they're doing well. I'm hoping Joe gets the bag because, again, I think he deserves it for the history and the time he's been around and the standard he's set in podcasting, especially when it comes to the urban community and whatever. But in terms of everything else, I'm done. Like, these guys are dickheads, man. They're, they're all dickheads. They, could, they can all jog on. 
I, I, I've got no time for any of these guys, man. Like, gaslighting fans, oh yeah, you don't know what's... What? Of course we don't know you. Like, what? What the fuck? What? We are, of course, going off what we see. That's what we see every day. That's content. Same what you, you do about other people when you're talking about them in media or in culture, whatever it may be called. Whose baby mother did what? Who did what? Who hit who? Like, who, who, who shot who? You're hypothesizing because you don't know the details. You're talking about it because it's the, the, the conversation in the culture at the moment. They just didn't like the attention or light being shined on them the other way. Like, nonsense behavior, bro. That's what I'm saying. The, the same issues that you could blame Rory and Mo for, for always talking about everyone else's business, saying how everyone else's deals are so bad. You know, more calling out Charlemagne, saying that, you know, whatever, and also saying the Breakfast Club is over when it's clearly not over. Rory obviously saying what he said about DJ Academics and then getting completely embarrassed on, online, so much so it maybe led to the ending of his engagement. Like, they clearly had some bad takes, clearly. And it clearly affected how they manoeuvred in the industry. It clearly affected how they were perceived. And then, of course, when it blew up in their faces, people can point and say, ha ha do you know what I mean because you're the one telling everyone else they got bad deals and you got completely shanked by your friend that you thought was your friend who clearly didn't love you in that way but we allow those fans to interpret that how we want to interpret that because that's the only information that we have available and we're also allowed to call it out if we want to call it out because the same way you're watching the fucking Kardashians or those guys are watching Kanye or watching Drake or watching Sweetie whatever who they're talking to is the same way we're watching them same thing some of us, some of us, are, are, I'd imagine there's a big population or big groups of the Joe Biden podcast, group, you know, listenership who probably don't even listen or watch the Shade Room. They don't even know what the, the, they don't care about blogs. They basically get the news only through Joe Biden podcast. That's where they get the humor. And maybe if they want to research it later, they'll find out more. But they only find out who Sweetie's dating, who she's sitting next to because Joe Biden wants to talk about it. Not because they actually view these things themselves anyway. So essentially, they again, it's kind of there. They're kind of viewing them as drama through them talking about other bits of drama but then they're gonna say oh they view us as characters of course could you talk about fucking characters oh, yeah, yeah. i'm gonna end i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop because i'm getting hot i'm getting bothered there's no point of getting agitated because it's silly